This is the book of 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 15. In account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, have written unto you. I want to give all honor, glory, and infinite praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rachak Wadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of great millstone peace and salutation to the Lex scattered abroad, pushing his truth in sincerity. May Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rachak Wadash, Brak Dum, bless you, Zequanium. The elders, you brothers, you sisters, the hopeful elect out through labor and keeping the commandments at the best of your ability, given diligence to make your calling and election sure. And of course, keeping faith in the heavenly father, Yahweh, and his beloved son, the Lord and our Savior, our King, Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, in these last days and these perilous times that we are living in. This is Brother Peshai, Ma'an Yahshua, and this be a quick lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Shai on the writings of the Apostle Paul. All right, the epistles of the Apostle Paul, all right, and the controversy concerning the epistles of the Apostle Paul, all right. Now, this came up again because in times past, and even to this day, all right, you have Christians that would um, wrestle at the writings of the Apostle Paul, believing that he was teaching salvation for all nations, all right. We're going to neither Jew nor Greek or go to the Gentiles, things of that nature. But brothers through the spirit, starting with the apostles, the elders, and bishops on down, have been breaking it down for, for years. All right, the correct understanding, all right, that those Gentiles, all right, or Grecians, all right, are Israelites, all right, Israelite foreigners, all right, who was Hellenized. When you go back to the book of Maccabees, the time of the Greek Empire, you know, a large sum of our people was Hellenized into those customs, all right, and in as much as their children's children's children, all right, didn't even call themselves Jews or keep the Sabbath, all right? They was calling themselves Greeks. And it's very similar to us today and this time, all right? The Spirit had me say at camp, um, last camp, it was Spirit of the Lord, you know, um, that the writings of the Apostle Paul are for us today as well because we all was Americans, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, Dominicans, Afro-Americans, African-Americans, Black, Negro, whatever, all right? Haitians, Jamaicans. It was all these different things, all right, that that um that Esau gave us. You see that? Because the prophecy in Psalm 83rd chapter goes to them trying to cut us off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more remembrance, all right? They had us forget that we was even Israelites, man. That's why we couldn't read and write during slavery, things of that nature. But through the prophecy in Revelation 11, Ezekiel 37, amongst others, we what? Uh, also, Wisdom Psalm 5th chapter, we have been blessed with the Rechak Wadash and have woken back up to who we are in these last days. You see that? So, us waking back up to who we are, coming out of the ways of being Gentiles, heathens, all right? Those writings the Apostle Paul wrote. Were for us, all right? Because some of the controversies they talk about is, you know, um, First Corinthians the eighth chapter, it goes to things eating things, sacrifice to idols. All right, they also talk about the circumcision and things of that nature, right? But in this lesson, I just want to tackle his uh, um, his writings being authority, all right? Because um, I mentioned Christians early, but now I'm gonna say it, you know, straight for what it is. You have Israelites, all right, predominantly the camp. Known as Sakari, you know, headed by um Gorilla Hebrew Alazar, all right, Deacon Haka, all right, Captain Taz, Hassad, and them, whatever, you know. They believe that the writings of the Apostle Paul are not authoritative. You see that? So when you look at the word authoritative, right? Authoritative literally means able to be trusted as being accurate or true, reliable. So they don't believe his writings are reliable accurate or true all right able to be trusted he can't trust his his writings right here it says commanding and self-confident likely to be respected and obeyed so they don't respect the writings of the apostle paul that's what they're saying and or, or obey his writings because you see it when he wrote to the church of corinth all right not to pray or prophesy with your head covered 
They said, man, we're going to pray and prophesy with a hat cover, man. All right? That's what he would have had. It's not just hats. All right? It's the do-rags. All right? It's the uh, ski mask. It's the hoodies. All right? It's, it's, you know, blatant disrespect to the writings of the Apostle Paul. You know? Because they don't believe it to be trusted. They don't believe it to be fully accurate or true. Now, they did say that they you know, they had no problem, Apostle Paul. But, you know, truth be told, if you believe it's right into deuterocanical, all right, would you look that word deuterocanical up? It means the, the deuterocanical books are books and passages considered by the Catholic Church, the Eastern Orthodox Church, and the Oriental Orthodox Churches, and slash or the Assyrian Church of the East to be canonical books of the Old Testament, but which Jews and Protestants regard as apocrypha. So a lot of the so-called deuterocanical books are the apocrypha, things of the nature, right? But that's what they consider deuterocanical, meaning second canon. All right? Which, um, let me see something very fast. Because the point, I'm, I'm trying to make this none too long, straight to the point. Let me just type this in right here. Let me type this in. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. All right. I was, I was typing in canonical books. All right. That's what they consider canonical. But in any event, you have to have faith and belief that the Most High God, Yahweh, through his son, Yahweh Shai, ordained all these 80 books. All right. That's me included in the Apocrypha as well. All right. That's what's needed for salvation in these last days. All right. And that's the truth. You see? So you can't go in there now and start picking, like, mm, this is not. We don't really need this. We don't really have to realize. The most I set it up, man. The most I compiled those books together. All right. Using King James, using those 47 scholars to translate the writings from the Hebrew, Greek, and Latin into the old English. Compiled into the book known as the Bible. You see that? Uh, Bible Biblos, collection of scrolls. You see? Because look at the precept. So once you start taking out. Which I'm going to get the precepts too. Once you start taking out and saying, uh, the writing of Apostle Paul. Uh, and then when he, the dude asked him about Luke, he said, Luke, um, mm, yeah, we could deal with like, Who do you think you are, man? Who do you think you are? Mm, yeah, we could deal with Luke. Did you not know Luke wrote the book of Acts? The same book you go into to try to say the Apostle Paul went off doing it, whatever the case may be. All right. And different councils or whatever. Who wrote the book of Acts? According to secular history, it was Luke. You see? So it's, 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 it's bad because that, and that's what it, that's what happens when you start um trying to be too deep. I'm just being honest. All right. Look at Isaiah 20 and verse nine. It says, whom shall he, whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. And that's how we break down the scriptures. For with stammering lips and another tongue, we speak to this people. All right. So in these last days, what's that tongue? What's the what's the language that all nations have to learn? English. All right. So that's what this that's the, that's the other tongue he's speaking to his people. So it had to get translated. But in any event, right? Like I said, none too long straight to the point. Look at some of the you know. Let's, let's go into the Apostle Paul. Was his writings authoritative? Was it you know divinely? inspired by the holy spirit was he just doing his own thing all right let's find out so when you get the um let's start with galatians no, no matter of fact let's get the book of acts i think the ninth chapter yep acts chapter 9 verse 1 and saul yet breathing out threatening to slaughter against the disciples of the lord went into the high priest so was did the apostle paul ever go off yeah he went off he was slaughtering the church he was persecuting the church all right he was going off Verse 2, and desired of him letter to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound into Jerusalem. But he was zealous for the law. All right. Remember, he was studying the law as well. He grew up learning it. They, they, yo, none, no one in Sakaria could say they grew up learning and studying the law. He, none of them could say they're Pharisees, doctors of the law. You can't. All right. Your 10 years of study, 15 years of study can compare to growing up, learning it, you know, with tutors. All right. So let's read on, man. It says, um, and as he journeyed, he came near Damascus and suddenly there's sh there's shine. And another thing, too, is prophesied of that grace in the book of Ezra as well. 
he was prophesied to have a certain amount of grace. And Apostle Paul, his 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 um his um apostleship to the Gentiles was it was filled with grace. A lot of them was coming out of heathen. Well, not a lot, they was coming out of heathenistic ways. All right, he had the right two letters to the Church of um, Corinthians because they were just you know those were the hardest ones to deal with. You see that. But he gave them advice, sound advice with certain situations, man. Understanding the grace through a lawyer, how shy. You see that, like if a man first, you know, waking up to the gospel of Yahweh shy, he's not circumcised, he didn't rush it. Oh, you gotta get circumcised right now. God's not gonna save him. He gotta let him learn Yahweh shy, and eventually on down, he get built up, then of course. All right? Like Abraham, when, when did he get circumcised? He was in his 90s. But he still was chosen through the promise. You see? So the scripture is going to his faith was imputed from as his righteousness, man. So it started with the faith and belief. You see? But then of course you rehearse righteous acts. Apostle Paul went to that as well. Do we make um um void the law? God forbid. We establish the law. Alright. But let's read on, man. It says, um, and as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined around about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul. Why persecutest thou me? A Lord Yahweh Shah speaking to him, it says, And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Yahweh Shai, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. All right, read another um, verse. It's, he spoke to him in the Hebrew tongue. All right. Matt, fellas, read that. I want to get that one right in the Hebrew tongue. Because this is the counter when he was talking to him. All right. I don't know why I always spell this wrong. Acts 26, right? Acts 26, 14. Then we're we'll about to Acts. It was the same thing, right? Same account. He's telling the same story. And when we were falling to the earth, I heard a voice speaking to me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And it's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. So our Lord Yahweh shall speak in Hebrew. Because that's a language spoken in the heavens. And I said, who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Yahweh Shai. Because he didn't say Jesus. Because Jesus is not Hebrew. All right? And before the letter J was even inserted into the scriptures, it was Aesus, all right? The letter J is the youngest letter in the alphabet. So what did he say to Apostle Paul right here? He said, I am Yahweh Shai, whom thou persecutest, all right? But rise, stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen and those things in the which I will appear unto thee. So he will continue to appear to the Apostle Paul and teach him things. Let's get another one right quick, all right? Back in Acts 9, all right, jumping down now, Acts 9 and 15. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel, man. All right, so Apostle Paul was a chosen vessel to bear his name before the Israelite foreigners, kings. You know, he was brought before different kings and the children of Israel, those I knew they was Israelites, the children of circumcision. All right. And I'll show him how great things he must suffer for my namesake. So he had to suffer for the namesake of Yahweh Shai. So he was a chosen vessel. So now it's the Galatians. Chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Yahweh Shai HaMashiach and Yahweh the Father who raised him from the dead. You see that? So Paul was not an apostle of men, all right, but by our Lord Yahweh Shai. Who set him up? Let's jump down to verse. Um, let me see. I might just read on down. Let's start verse eleven, right? But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. So he's saying the gospel that I'm preaching is not of man, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, right? But by the revelation of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. So Yahweh Shai, our Lord and Savior, revealed these things to the Apostle Paul. All right. So these different letters he's writing to the churches. All right. In Galatia. All right. In Thessalonica. All right. In Corinth. In Philippi. All right. So on and so forth. He was taught it by Yahweh Shai, man. Okay. So what I want to do is now, let's get the book of 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter. We're going to jump down to this point right here, verse 37. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, 
Let him acknowledge that the things that are right unto you are the commandments of the Lord. So certain things the Apostle Paul wrote that's controversial. That you may read it and be like, wait, 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 what does this mean right here? All right. But those are commandments of the Lord. He's speaking in the spirit, man. You see? And what Zakari would try to say is, oh, y'all sound like Christians. All right, no. Because Christians believe that heathens could get saved. All right? They believe you don't have to keep the law. They believe Apostle Paul was teaching against the law. He wasn't teaching against the law. All right? He was giving wisdom for the time. It, it was grace. All right? You got to get built up. You see? And now what I'm going to do is read the book of... um. Peter, all right, which I started over. Look at Second Peter, third chapter, which I'm gonna read the whole thing now, or right, not the whole chapter, but this whole um verse right here. Second Peter three and verse thirteen, an account that the long suffering of our of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, have written unto you, as also in all his epistles, not some of his epistles, not the you know the last of his epistles, because he got built up and got better. You know, started teaching better. No, all his epistles, all right? Which was all his epistles. All his epistles is, is literally from the book of Romans on down to what? Hebrews. Oh, I don't know who wrote the book of Hebrews. Oh, you don't know who wrote the book of Hebrews, but majority of scholars and also a majority of different texts, we know it's the Apostle Paul. And it says it, all right? It was written. I have my arm. Where my sword at? All right. Let me go to Hebrews right quick on my sword. You see? Bear with me, brothers. All right, so when you get Hebrews, and you get towards the end of Hebrews, right? It says, written to the Hebrews from Italy by Timothy. All right? Got to remember, Apostle Paul was on house arrest. So some letters were written by his men, all right, and dished out to the churches. But it was a it was an um, epistle of Paul. As a matter of fact, it says it in the beginning of the book of um Hebrews. Let me go get that right quick, right? In, in my sword, it says, the epistle of Paul, the apostle to the Hebrews. That's it, man. I'm not even going to go back and forth on that one. All right? So from the from the book of Romans to Hebrews, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 books of the New Testament. That's majority of the New Testament written by the apostle Paul. And the Most High included it. All right, through the spirit. Why? Because it's needed for us today. Like I mentioned earlier, it was mainly written for those coming out of Gentile um, mindset. All right, and understanding grace. All right, which I want to get that as well, if I can remember where it's at. I know it's in the book of um, Ezra. Oh, Ezra. It's like, let me see. Uh, where you at? I think this is it. Yeah, no, it's second legends one and thirty-six. They have seen no prophets, yet they shall call their sins to remembrance and acknowledge them. I take to witness the grace of the people to come. So he was prophesied of that grace to come. Alright? Whose little ones rejoice in gladness, and though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, yet in spirit they believe the thing that I say. All right, and that's us today as well. We didn't see him with bodily eyes, but we believe in the spirit, the things that um that's written. All right, so Apostle Paul, you know, teaching the Israelite foreigners, all right, it was grace included. All right, it was seasoned. He was seasoning them with salt, man. He wasn't just, you know, because uh, he remember, he came from persecuting the church, you know, because under the law there's no mercy, and he and once he got revealed certain things. Revealed a lot of things. He understood that too. Grace. Let's get that precept. All right. Look at this precept in the book of John. Oh, that's in John. All right. Let's read it though. All right. John one in verse uh sixteen. And as and as fullness have all we receive in grace for grace for the law was given by Moses but grace and truth came by Yahweh Shah Mashiach. So Apostle Paul has when he started when he was out to teach the Gentiles. He was teaching grace and truth through Yahweh Shai Mashiach. All right. And yes, establishing the law as well, but we understand. Matter of fact, uh, let me get this preset. I think it's um is it Romans 8? Romans 8 and 2. For the law of the spirit of life 
in Hamashiach, Yahweh shall have been made free from the law of the sin of death. All right? Well, that's the law of Moses, the, the, the law. All right? For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the, through the flesh, the Mosai's sinning, Yahweh sinned his own son, Yahweh shall have lightning for the sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. All right? So he understood these things, man. All right? But yeah, that's the point I want to get as well. Um, Let me see. I'm going to get one more. I'm going to end it off. This, I think Romans 7 is a good one too. Yep. Yeah, Romans 7 and 5. For when we were in the flesh, the, the motions of sins, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. Right? Well, for the wages of sin is death. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead when we were held, that we should serve the newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. See that? So another thing too, like, so let me go back to first, second Peter, right? I just remember, remember this as well. So Apostle Paul was a teaching against the law. All right, so that's the point I'm bringing out. All right, he was giving you grace. All right, let's get second Peter three and let's finish this, right? Because Deacon Haka literally said this, if I'm not mistaken. All right, I remember him mentioning in one of the videos um, uh, uh, that Apostle Paul's writings are not scripture. It says, I think he's. I think he misquoted, but he mentioned. Um, it says like he he's mentioned his, the Apostle Paul's letters, and then the scriptures, something like that. Like trying to separate the scriptures from Apostle Paul's letters. But let's read on. Let's 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 find out. All right, was Apostle Paul's writings scriptures? Let's find out. Second Peter three and verse uh, I read fifteen again, an account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, right? Even as our beloved brother Paul also according to the wisdom given unto him, I have read it unto you. As also in all his epistles, not some, all his epistles, and I mentioned them from Romans to Hebrews, speaking them of things in some, in which are some things hard to be understood. So that means the, the head apostles, Peter, James, John on down, they read the, the epistles of Apostle Paul, and they were like, yeah, some of this can be hard to understand. All right? Which they that are unlearned and unstable rest. So if you're unlearned, you're unstable, you have no foundation in your house shy. You will rest, all right? Meaning what? You will struggle. You will fight against it. Like, mm, I don't know. This will, right? As they do also the other scriptures. The other. So, Apostle Peter is literally saying Apostle Paul's writings are scriptures. Because he says, as they do also the other scriptures. So, not just Apostle Paul's scriptures. The other scriptures, they wrestle at it. You see that? Unto their own destruction. You see? So, come on, man. Let's read on. Ye, ye, ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware, lest ye also, being led away with the error of, of the wicked, fall from our own steadfast. So he's, he's a warning. All right? You don't want to be led away. You see? But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Yahushua Mashiach, send me glory both now and forever. Amen. So what I'm going to do now is get the, um, I'm going to end it off with this right here. All right? So, the Apostle Paul's writings are authoritative, all right? Not less authoritative. Than, no, it's authoritative, okay? Point blank, period. Uh, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1. Be followers of me. This is the order, all right? Be followers of me. And it's not just to the church of Corinth. They try to say that. Oh, that's just written to the church of Corinth. That's not, that's not for us. And it's not, no, it's for us too. What are you talking about, man? There's order to these things. Be followers of me, even as I also am of Mashiach Yahweh Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. All right. The word ordinances. Look that up real quick. Is um per, uh, All right. Paradisis in the Greek. And it says given up, given over the act of given. Let's jump down to the point of the body of precepts. Especially ritual, which in the opinion of the later Jews were orally delivered by Moses and orally transmitted in unbroken succession to subsequent generations, which precepts both illustrated and expanding, expanding the written law. Okay, expanding the written law as they did were to as they did were to be obeyed with equal reverence, tradition, ordinance. You see that? So these ordinances, all right, that Apostle Paul uh, written was expanding the written law. Was not more things expounded to Ezra's 
concerning the prophecies that was given to Daniel? Was not our Lord Yahweh Shai expounding more on things that was written, giving us more understanding? All right. Let me see if I can find this preset, man. Like I said, I'm going to end it off, man. All right. Matter of fact, when we got to get out, just quote it. Like, when our Lord Yahweh Shai was, was going into, um, uh, put in, um, a man putting away his wife. All right. According to the Lord of Moses, you get that bill of divorce. You see? Let me see if I can find that right, quick, right fast. Yeah. Deuteronomy 24, verse 1. It says, when a man have taken a wife and married her, and it come to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because he have found some uncleanness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of his house. But then what did our Lord Yahweh Shah say? So is this a contradiction? No. He's expounding on it. Matthew 5 and verse 31. It have been said, right? He's talking about what I just read in Deuteronomy 24. Whosoever shall put away his wife, let me give her a writing of divorcement. But I say unto you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causing her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committed for adultery. You see? So you see, he broke it down. So let me, let me jump down, right? I, I believe it's in the same chapter. Um, let me just type this in, right? So he, he, went, he expounded on it. You see? Uh, no, that's not it. Right. Now we're going to jump down to verse, uh, look at Matthew 19 and 8. It says, And he saved unto the Moses because of the hardness of your heart suffered you to put away your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. So when he when he say Moses, was Moses, that means what? Was Moses doing his own thing? Just writing that? Oh, they pissing me off. Let me just write. No, he's he talking about the most high through Moses. The meaning what the most high allows certain things. All right. For the heart, the hardness of our hearts. You see? So certain things that got expounded further, even going back to the beginning, how the law was passed down traditionally orally before it was written on the law of Moses, the Mosaic law. All right. By the finger of the Mosai. You see that? So even in the written law, things were expounded on that the Mosai allowed before it was written on paper. Quick example. Jacob were um, marrying Rachel and Leah. According to the law of Moses, you're not supposed to marry a woman and her sister. You see? But the most I allowed Jacob to. They would curse Jacob out, say, you're going off and I'm going to kill you. No, he allowed it. So even in the times of, the, of things written in the law of Moses, all right, I guess from a lot of those, uh, the, uh, the law had to get expounded further when the law of Yahushua came on the scene. He expounded further on it. Even, even on further on down to the minute he taught one of being Apostle Paul. Okay? So it says that he saved unto them Moses because of the hardness of your heart suffered you to put away your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. And I say unto you. Let me see. Did I read this? Yeah, I read this part. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife and set it be for fornication, shall marry and marry another. Oh, it's another um perspective. And shall marry another, committed for adultery, and whoso married her that which is put away, they've committed adultery, man. So you know, that's the point I want to get, man. Just a, a quick example on the law being expounded on. So that's the ordinances that Apostle Paul gave as well. All right, they expand it. Let's read that again. In, a, in Paradisus, the word for ordinances in uh, 1 Corinthians 11, chapter verse 2, it says, Of the body of precepts, especially virtue, which in the opinion of a lot of Jews were orally delivered by Moses and orally transmitted in an unbroken succession to subsequent generations, which precepts both illustrated and expanding the written law as they did were to be obeyed with equal reverence. You see that? So, like Apostle Paul said, first Corinthians um the fourteenth chapter, all right, verse I think like thirty-seven on down. It says things that write unto you are commandments of the Lord, man. It's all through the Spirit, man. You know, so Apostle Paul's writings are authoritative, you know. So concerning certain, I may do other lessons concerning the things they try to say he went off on, whatever the case may be. We could break it down, give understanding to it, shed light to it. it would be the Lord's will. So with that, let's give all honor, glory, and infinite praise to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham. Rechak Wadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone, peace and salutation. City Lex got it abroad, pushing his truth and sincerity. Without him, say Shalom, my Baba Ball, Shalom.